Hi everyone, I would like to talk today about 3D printing and medical phantom. Um, this is the title of my talk. I'm very privileged to be the first speaker and thank you very much everyone for joining to our symposium. Today I'm going to talk about so what is 3D printing, why we use 3D printing, why we interested in 3D printing, um, the importance of medical phantom, um, different method of fabrication medical phantoms um, also my finding of acoustic properties of 3d print materials and why we're still interested in developing novel materials and novel 3d printing technologies so what's the main advantage of using 3d printing so the it's freedom of design you can complex uh, difficult uh, including anatomical structures um, you can customize it and share it electronically um, at very cheap tooling and energy efficient meaning you have uh, lost of, uh, of material very small um, it's very efficient for prototyping and small volume production disadvantages of using 3d printing technology is that it requires post-processing very often um, it could be quite expensive especially if you go towards mass production so it's not suitable for mass production and uh, also uh, there's a limited number of material that's available at the moment uh, but this um, range of material growing every year which is a good thing for the market um, we can say that the more and more billions dollars uh, invested in this uh, 3d print technology and healthcare particular uh, sector is growing and in 2016 it was about 16 percent and now it's close to 30 35 percent of the share um, also number of publications uh, regarding the 3d printing and 3d printing and surgery is also growing um, every year so it's a big interest so what uh, uh, it, I would like to step back and think about what the old ways of making things like maybe your granddad way of making stuff so for example you have a block of materials then you cut you drill you chisel it or maybe you CNC machining then you get the object you want but you have a lot of weight uh, as you making your part so the added manufacturing or technology of the future is that you have a material as a powder or the liquid and then you use um, your uh, 3d printer that to use that powder and build layer by layer sort of like a lego as you see it here in the video of people building a car um, and that's how 3d printing create an object and you have significantly less waste so uh, 3D printing can be um, involved uh, extruding, uh, jetting, fusing, or curing. Um, so that's why the three major processes were to develop uh, the powder binding technique. That's where you have a powder which could be metal, could be plastic, um, that fused using, um, for example, laser or heat, uh, and the fuse partial together layer by layer uh, photopolymerization method is one of the oldest methods when you have resin that cured on the influence of light so um, you put uh, you have a box with liquid um, and then you shine the light layer by layer and this way you create uh, an object and uh, the most common nowadays uh, is the extrusion uh, method. And this method involves um, filament, which is have a material uh, spool of plastic. Um, and this material is fitted uh, into the extrusion hat that heated to around 200 degrees. And at the plastic melt, it deposit the material layer by layer 
it's quite good for developing a small object. Uh, of course, uh, the poor strength on that axis, one of the disadvantages of this technology. So why do we need medical fountains? So for training the students and new clinicians, for gaining confidence before performing the first human procedures, uh, reducing the operation time, hopefully improving the surgical and procedures outcomes. Uh, another one, reducing the unnecessary errors leading to the complication during the procedures, which also involve increasing the NHS cost. So the way I've been involved in developing medical phantoms, I started in developing, first of all, customized part uh, using 3D print technology. Then I developed there is anatomical teaching models, including brain models, placenta model, uh, imaging training models, uh, where you use ultrasound, phantoms. Um, I'll give an example later on. Uh, also, patient specific and patient teaching. Uh, for example, the case of neuroblastoma model that try to help children to understand their diseases. Um, and also the surgical planning. So the way medical phantom developed, uh, three main methods. The first one is 3D printed mold. Second, dissolvable 3D printed material um, used. And the third one is direct printing. The first method, uh, 3D printed mold, that where you develop, uh, design um, an object. So in this case, in the case uh, for um, a container where the ultrasound uh, compatible material, the agar, could be uh, poured in. Uh, and then after that, um, in this particular case, uh, I also 3D printed uh, vessels, uh, in the cases of stenosis and branching of the vessels. Um, and this particular phantom, uh, the way it was developed, first of all, uh, you put your vessels and branches, the 3D printed uh, rod, then you pour in the agar, remove the rod, let it set, then you remove the rod, and then you can use it uh, once the water in there uh, for training processes. And quite useful since the clinician can insert the needle or especially medical students and practice uh, visualization of the ultrasound and practice um, how to hold the needle, how to hold the ultrasound probe at the same time. Um, other examples um, is developed uh, vasculature of the placenta and uh, in the same way, uh, he took a photograph of the vessel and designed the vessel and create the mold for vein and artery and then developed the model that could be ultrasound and um, here we could visualize um, not only the vessel but also um, the good about that phantom that you can uh, use it to train the new technologies uh, that have been developed. Also, we were developing a brain model uh, where the full brain could be printed. Uh, this brain is different sections and quite useful tool for training. Second method is dissolvable 3D printed material. So, for example, natural PVA or there are some other material that could be dissolved. The advantage of this material is that you can 3D print internal part of the, of the object, then put in the water or other soluble, and then the material will um, dissolve over the time. And this way um, you can create uh, phantoms that has internal structures. This particular phantom uh, was used to test the photoacoustic imaging technology. Uh, the technology that used um, 
combination of the light source, the laser source, and ultrasound. Um, and then here the the vessel, internal vessels were 3D printed using PVA, and then comparated inside of the uh, just flexible material, and then put in the water, and the internal structure being dissolved, then connected some blue connectors, uh, injected a few ink, and this way we could image, um, and we image several positions. Um, we get both ultrasound signal and photoacoustic signal. Um, the advantage of photoacoustic technology, for those who don't know, is the technology that allows to um, visualize the chemical, chemical composition of particular um, vessels. So, for example, if you have artery or vein on ultrasound, it's very difficult to see the difference. Well, if you superimpose photoacoustic and ultrasound signal together, then you can you be able to differentiate between two. And the third method is direct printing. So, um, for example, Port and Wayne Swine model is one of my first model 3D printed model, um, or for example, model for spinal injection application. Um, it's good that you can create such fantastic um, model. Uh, disadvantage they're quite expensive, especially if you use um, multi materials. Um, what I decided to do is to characterize 3D printing materials. I created a setup. We've been merged in the water. We have uh, two uh, receiving transmitting probes and a sample of the different materials for putting in place in the middle. Then acoustic signal has been analyzed to uh, track two um, parameters, speed of sound and attenuation. And what we found that the speed of sound is decreasing as more rubbery type materials, uh, while the attenuation all the way around increasing. So the rubbery type plastic uh, 3D printed materials is highly attenuated, which is not really suitable for direct printing uh, ultrasound compatible phantom. That's why I started developing a technology, uh, 3D print technology that use flexible material called gel wax. Um, Gaia, Carol, and Jamal will talk more about this technology. Uh, in the following talk, um, and um, the use, the main advantage of this technology that you can have ultrasound compatible models directly printed. So the conclusion: uh, 3D printing can be very powerful for developing teaching and surgical planning patient education model. Um, Chalvac technology will be described later, as I mentioned, and uh, work on the viscosity of the material study will be also presented by Gaia. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll be happy to answer any question you might have.